Welcome to the Kaseya 9.3 upgrade training provided by Atomic Data. This training will give you a brief overview of the new features and redesigned interface of the Kaseya 9.3 Live Connect system. New features in Kaseya 9.3 include the new Kaseya Live Connect, a new Quick View window, updated agent module, the automatic agent updates, and a redesigned KAV module. The new Kaseya Live Connect is a native application-based system with a redesigned UI based on the Google WebKit. You can launch from the agent icon or you can launch from your start menu. Clicking on the agent icon still launches a remote control interface. You can hover over that icon and select Live Connect from the quick action window. You can also launch Kaseya Live Connect from your start menu or the applications folder on a Mac computer. Once you launch Live Connect, it'll prompt you for your username and password, and then take you to a screen where you can select agents to work on. Kaseya Live Connect does support multiple tabs, so you can work on as many systems at the same time as you need and click between the tabs. If you click on the plus button up in the upper right-hand corner, that will add a new tab for you to add another system into. The Asset Summary View is the first page that you see when you connect to a Live Connect session on a workstation or a server. The Live Connect window shows you a thumbnail overview of what's going on on the machine, a memory and CPU graph. You have all of the disk volumes that are shown, quick agent procedures that can be launched, user information, and network information. This interface also provides a list of the top five processes that are running and the top five last five system events uh, so that any troubleshooting may start there for slow, slow performing systems. To drill into the Kaseya features, you can click on the three bars in the upper left hand corner to open up the Kaseya navigation menu. Once you do that, you'll notice that there are a bunch of options in there. Some of those options, such as the asset menu, have multiple sub options, including in this case, the summary, a list of documents, patch settings, and procedures. The asset information tab is showing you information that is collected during the latest audit process that runs every three days. There's tabs for computer information, disk volume information, network information, and in general system information. That also includes the chassis serial number, which is helpful for opening up support requests when the manufacturer. It also shows you the count of CPUs, the amount of memory that's installed, and a maximum memory size that's allowed. The log viewer shows you various logs from inside of Kaseya. The agent logs show you connectivity to the agent, while the alarm and monitor action logs show you a list of alarms and the actions that were taken after those alarms occurred. Configuration changes showed you any changes that were made to the system, such as patch, patch schedule, audit schedule, or any other changes to the way the system is handled within Kaseya. The legacy and Kaseya remote control logs show you any events where an engineer or a technician has remoted into a system. On most of the new Kaseya Live Connect pages, there is a new filter option, which is the three horizontal lines in the upper right-hand corner. That allows you to select, in this case, the admin for the remote control logs that you're trying to look at. The patch status page shows you various information at the top about how the system is configured, when the last patch scan is, how often it does patch scans, how often automatic updates occur, and the reboot action after the update has been completed. The bottom section shows you various patches and knowledge base articles that have not been installed on the system. You can also click on the patch status history to see the history of when patches were installed. The procedures section in the agent status shows you the history of agent procedures, so what procedures have happened in the past, as well as logs and information about procedures that have already executed. The logs are a very good place to start if you have an agent procedure that is failing, as it will likely show you the problem, or at least the step that it encountered an error with. Any pending procedures are listed here. That it also includes uh, patch scans, latest audits, and automatic updates. Those are typically scheduled by the policy management system. You can cancel the, the uh, 
procedure from running in the future by clicking on the red X or execute it right now with the green dot. You can change the schedule for when those things occur by clicking on the clock icon. However, anything managed by policy management is subject to being reset to balance the load appropriately. You can also execute single, at, single uh, procedures on the machine that you're working on. This is useful when, for when you're only working on one machine. However, if you need to execute the same procedure on multiple machines, the web interface, the classic web interface for Kaseya would be preferred. The software page shows you information about programs uh, that have been installed. So the Add and Remove Programs tab shows you applications that were installed using the Windows installer or some sort of other installer that actually properly registers the installed application. This list mirrors and matches the Add and Remove Programs list on a specific workstation inside of the control panel. The Installed Apps tab shows you every executable that exists on the system. So it may not actually be installed, but it would pick up any files that are executables that live on your desktop, in the downloads folder, in a temp folder, or anywhere else on the file system. The user accounts tab shows you any user accounts that are installed on the local computer. This will not show domain accounts even if it is run on a domain controller. This is useful for when you have workgroup machines and you're trying to troubleshoot uh, computer lockout issues. The Kaseya Live Connect also includes the Kaseya Remote Control. There are two methods of launching remote control. One is using a shared session, which uses screen sharing technology similar to BMC, or a private session, which uses RDP over the Kaseya Live Connect tunnel. Uh, one thing to note is that the private session requires RDP to be enabled on the server or workstation that you're trying to access. The KLC, Kaseya Live Connect also includes a file manager. This allows you to download, upload, create files, or delete them from the file system. You can upload a file, create a folder, or check the transfer status from the icons on the top section of the window. You can select the menu for each individual file by accessing the three dots on the right-hand side. This allows you to download, delete, move, make a copy, or rename the files that you have file that you have selected. If you want to select multiple files, you can use either your shift key or the control key to select multiple files, and then click on the three dots at the very top of the window to select the action to apply to all of those files at the same time. Kaseya Live Connect also includes a command shell. The improvements in the command shell are that copy and paste now works, so you can both copy text out of the command window, or you can paste commands into the command window. These commands still execute as a system behind the user, so the user has no knowledge that this is happening. PowerShell support will be completed in 2016. However, the new version at this point does include the ability to execute PowerShell scripts. The Services tab shows you any system services that are set up on the machine. You have the ability to stop, restart, disable, or change the startup method for any of the services listed. The Processes tab also shows you any processes that are running. You can sort by memory, you can sort by CPU, username, or process ID. This gives you the ability to stop or force stop any processes that are running on the system. The registry editor allows you to make changes to registry keys and other items inside the registry. Uh, it, the one feature it does not include is the ability to set security on registry entries. Uh, all objects created will inherit their parent security. The event viewer built into Kaseya Live Connect is a very powerful way of looking at the Windows event logs. Uh, it shows information from the application log, the security and system log, as well as PowerShell and other logs that are pertinent to Kaseya. Each line includes the event ID, which when clicked brings you to a Google search page with relevant information, as well as the plus icon to view details about the event that you're looking at. The quick view window 
also known as the quick action window, shows up when you hover over an agent icon. Uh, from inside of that window, you can launch remote control, you can launch private remote control, or the Live Connect system. It also shows you various in, uh, groups of information pulled from the latest audit, as well as the ability to run quick procedures. The new agent, mod the agent module has also had user interface changes. You'll notice a set of checkboxes on the far left that allow you to select one or multiple systems to apply changes to. The changes include uh, managing the agent, so you can update the agent, you can delete the agent, change the group of the agent, the working directory, or suspend and resume all actions on that agent. You can also set credentials, test credentials, and remove the credentials from Kaseya. Just a reminder that administrative credentials are required for areas, all areas of Kaseya to operate properly. Uh, you can use the set credentials feature to add new credentials or the test credentials feature to test them. If the key is gold, then that means that credentials have tested and passed. If the credentials are missing, it will show a gray icon. One of the new added, uh, features in the agent module is the addition of column sets. Previously to this version, you had the ability to adjust and change the columns that were displayed on your page. The new column sets feature allows administrators to create new column sets and then other users to be able to make use of them. If there's a column set that you need that includes or needs, you need to remove columns from in order to make it uh, useful, please open up a ticket with our Network Operations Center and we will have an engineer work directly to create a custom column set for you. There's also a new module for KAV. That is, the KAV is the Kaspersky antivirus engine that is built into the Kaseya platform. The new module has been rewritten from scratch using the Kaspersky API. All profile changes for scans and updates have been applied in minutes in our lab and in test other larger test environments. It can be installed via group policy, or I'm sorry, policy management, which is built into Kaseya as a way to enforce settings on specific organizations or groups. If you wish for us to install a policy that forces antivirus installation, we will have an engineer work with you directly to understand the impacts, including the reboot of the agent as soon as it starts checking into Kaseya. Pre and post procedures are also supported, which includes the ability for us to pop up a warning uh, announcing the installation of KAV and pending reboots. Agents must be upgraded to the new KAV module. As long as Kaspersky is the current version, which is 10.2.4.674 at the recording of this presentation, there is no reboot required. To migrate the agents from KAV Classic to the new module, you would use the new module and reinstall over the existing installation. But that will do is remove the command and control service and install the new one. Old profile settings will not be moved from the previous Kaspersky rollout. If you have a custom policy for various exclusions or scan times, then you, you will need to request a new policy be created by our Network Operations Center. The new KEV module looks the same. Even though it's been rewritten under the hood, the look and feel is still the same. Uh, KAV Profiles is one area that did get some updated UI uh, graphics, and in this case, it's the use of multiple tabs and multiple rows in the bottom area to control configuration changes for the machine. I'd like to thank you for watching this uh, Kaseya 9.3 upgrade video. Uh, we look forward to the next week or so as the new Kaseya 9.3 is updated. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the NOC, or you can reach out to me directly at Ryan, R-Y-A-N, at atomicdata.com. Have a great day.